A lot of you that watch my videos want to get into engineering and if you're already in engineering you're probably curious in what's in the road ahead. So that inspired me to make this video to answer the question of what is even in an engineering degree. If you're new to this channel my name is Tamer and I'm a recent mechanical engineering graduate from the University of Waterloo. I'll share with you my transcript, my grades and explain the courses that I took throughout my degree. I'm creating this video to be transparent because I know I would have loved to see a video like this when I was in my first year of engineering. So fall of 2016 was my first semester in engineering where I took a total of five courses. First up we have chemistry we got an 83 percent the first half of the course before midterms was pretty straightforward because it was a lot of stuff from high school but after midterms there was a bunch of new stuff so it was a little bit difficult second we have linear algebra where i got an 87 percent this was possibly one of my hardest courses in first year because it was such a new way of looking at math it was a lot different than the calculus that i'm used to from high school and also my teacher had a pretty thick french accent which made it very hard to understand her Third, we have a calculus course where I got a 94%. I absolutely love calculus. It just makes so much sense to me, especially this particular course because it was just reviewed from high school. So it was honestly a bird course for the semester. Fourth, we have an introduction to mechanical engineering practice course. This was a project course that didn't really have an exam. So that was nice. In this course, I learned a lot about SOLIDWORKS, which is a very useful software tool that a lot of mechanical engineers use at their job. We also had a bunch of hand-drawn assignments where the professor would teach us how to draw and I absolutely sucked at drawing, which is what brought my grade down for this course. There was also a group project at the end of the term where we had to build some mini type race car. Finally, we have mechanics, which is just physics. All the concepts that I learned in this course were stuff I already knew in high school. The only difference is the word problems and the questions that were given to us in this course were so much more difficult than the questions that I was used to in high school and I ended up getting an 80%. I ended off the term with an 85.46% average and I was pretty happy with it because at the time my professors always told me that 70 is the new 90. So I thought I was the top of my class but a lot of students got grades in the 80s and a few students got grades in the 90s so when the professor said 70 is the new 90 I don't really know where he got that from. But anyways, just to put things into perspective with the grade that I had for that term, I was ranked number 38 out of like 220 or 250 students. Anyways, let's move on to my second semester of my first year of engineering in the winter term of 2017. The first course I took in that term was an electrical circuits course that taught us how to analyze current and voltage and circuits and I ended up getting an 89% in that course. Second, I took Calculus 2 in this semester, which was a continuation of Calculus 1 that I took in the last semester, except everything in this course was completely brand new to me because I didn't take any AP classes in high school, so I didn't have that edge that some of the students in my class had. But I personally really enjoy Calculus, so I was able to get a 92% in the course. Third, we have an Introduction to Mechanical Engineering Practice 2 where I got an 86%. Uh, in this course, I learned how to code using C++. This is one of the very few coding courses that mechanical engineers actually take. It was an interesting course, but coding just really isn't my thing. I'd much rather be doing mechanical design. Fourth, one of my favorite courses this term was material science, where I ended up getting a 90% in it. In this course, we learn about all the details of all the materials out there, like metals and plastics. It's a really useful course because it teaches you the basics and fundamentals of mechanical design and material selection, which is really important for mechanical engineering job interviews. It's also one of the few courses in mechanical engineering that don't really require using equation a lot of numbers, and it's more of a conceptual memorization type course. Finally, I took an elective in my first year called Religion of the West, where I ended up getting a 93%. I personally grew up Muslim and I was just curious to learn a little bit more about other religions, which is why I took it. I also heard it's a bird course, so I figured, why not? Then during the summer of 2017, I was doing an internship and I was back in school to start my second year in fall of 2017. First course I took was a calculus course called Calculus 3, and as you can tell by now, calculus never leaves you in engineering. I ended up getting a 98% in this course, which is, I think, one of my highest grades in university. Maybe I'm a nerd, but I just really like calculus. Second course I took was statistics, where we learned all about data collection and confidence intervals, and I ended up getting a 90% in that course. Mainly because I took a similar course in high school called data management, so a lot of the material wasn't really completely brand new to me. Third course I took was mechanics of reformable solids, where we got an 85%. This course is like more advanced physics, where we learn a lot about how different materials will act under different loads. For example, understanding how different materials will act when they're crushed, twisted, heated, pulled, compressed, etc. It's a very useful course, especially for mechanical engineering job interviews. Fourth course I took was another material science course where I ended up getting an 80%. And to be honest with you, I have no idea how I got an 80% in that course. I really like material science, but the professor wasn't the best at teaching and a lot of the questions on the exam had stuff that wasn't really taught to us in class. So no matter how much work I put in, I didn't do that well on my quizzes, assignments, or exams. But somehow my grade ended up being an 80%. I have no idea how, but hey, I'm not complaining. Next, I had another circuits course where I got an 88%. We learned all about motors, DC machines, transformers, and a bunch of other electrical systems. The sixth and final course I took that term was called Love and Friendship. And before you make fun of me for taking that course, I only took it because I heard it was an easy elective, so I figured 
I wanted something into that term, so might as well take it. But I ended up getting an 84% of that course because there was just so much readings and I hated it. So I guess it wasn't as easy as I expected. Moving on in the winter of 2018, I had my second internship and then I was back in school in the summer of 2018 to finish my second half of my second year called 2B. Starting off that term, I took another calculus course called Ordinary Differential Equations, where essentially we use all the calculus that we learned in the last couple of years to solve very unique equations. It was by far my lowest calculus grade so far where I got an 89%. Second, I took a dynamics course that term, which was an absolute nightmare. I just get PTSD thinking about this course. You see, I was proud so far in my engineering studies to have never gotten a grade below 80%, but then this course comes in and I ended up getting a 71% in it. It's not that the course content was very difficult or I didn't understand any of the material, it was just that the professor really took pride in making her students struggle. I even think she hated me because one time I asked a question in class and she made fun of me in front of the entire class for asking a stupid question. Fun fact about this course though was that when my final grade first came out, I had a 62% in it, but it didn't really make sense to me so I ended up talking to the professor in TA and asked him to have a look at my final exam and I found that they ended up making some mistakes when grading my final exam so I was able to negotiate that grade back up to a 71% after they fixed the mistake that they made and apparently the mistake they made on my exam they also made on some other students exam as well so I was able to boost their grades as well. The third course I took was called Mechanics of Reformable Solids 2 where I ended up getting an 82%. I really enjoyed this course because a lot of the material taught in it was actually very useful in a lot of the mechanical engineering job interviews that I had. I had a really good understanding of the course content, but I think the reason my grade was a little low for this course was just because of how long the exams were. For both the midterm and the exam, I had two and a half hours to finish them, but it was just ridiculously long that I wasn't able to finish it in time. Next up, we got thermodynamics where we learned all about controlling heat and energy and ended up getting an 89% in that course. Finally, we got this digital logic course that I took that term where we learned all about PLC programming, Boolean gates, and microcomputing. And this is the second coding course or software course that mechanical engineers have to take. I really liked this course at first because I ended up getting 100% on the midterm, so I was like, damn, maybe I should get into software engineering. But then I didn't do so well on the final and my grade went all the way down to 90%. It honestly would have been lower, but the midterm was just worth so much that it helped save my grade. And that was the end of my second year. My third year began in winter 2019 and at this point I'm officially halfway through my engineering studies. I had an advanced engineering math course that term that involved using abstract equations and solving them using calculus and I ended up getting 81% of that course. I also had a kinematics and dynamics course where I learned all about the physics behind mechanical parts like gears and shaft. I ended up getting an 84% of that course. The third course I took was a manufacturing course and it was a very useful course because it taught us about all the different manufacturing methods out there like injection molding and machining that we used to make all the stuff around us like cars and our phones. The professor for this course wasn't the greatest at teaching so I ended up having to teach myself a lot of the content for this course but he ended up giving us very easy tests and exams so I can't really complain. I ended up getting a 92% of that course. Next up I took a fluid mechanics course where I learned all about the flow of air and water. I did however end up getting a 73% of that course mainly because honestly I just found the content to be very difficult so that's why my grade wasn't that high in that course. I also took another thermodynamics course that term where I got an 84%. Next up we have 3B which is the second half of my third year of engineering and this term is known to be the hardest term in mechanical engineering mainly because all the content, all the courses you learn in your previous terms begins to come together in this term. The first course I took was a mechanical design course where we learned all about the different things you need to consider when designing things like machines or any kind of device and ended up getting an 80% of that course. Second, I took a heat transfer course where we learned all about the different ways that heat can move and I ended up getting a 91% of that course. Third, I took a controls course that term. This was another software course that mechanical engineers have to take and ended up getting an 83%. Fourth, I took a fluid mechanics course where I ended up getting a 79%. And as you can probably tell by now, fluid mechanics isn't really my thing. I really enjoy mechanical design and material science a lot more. I also had this project course that term where we got in groups of five people and we worked on creating this thing called a store platform that is capable of moving a marble through a maze. It had a bit of mechanical design work but also had a lot more software work because you needed to code these motors in specific ways to make them do what you want so I wasn't really a big fan of that course. I ended up with an 80% in it. Finally I took an engineering economics course that term that teaches us all about financial management, compound interest and how wealth accumulates and transfers over time. This is like the only business course that engineers have to take and ended up getting an 87% in it. Also this term was in the fall of 2019 which was the last term before the pandemic so this was the last term I had in person. The next two terms were completely virtual and completely online. Next in the fall of 2020 I started my final year in mechanical engineering. For the first three years of engineering, all the courses that I took were mandatory and the university chose them for me. 
But starting fourth year, I get to choose my own courses, which is pretty cool. And in all honesty, I just took the easiest courses. First, I took a human resources management course, so I ended up getting a 93%. And this course is known in my university to be one of the easiest electives you can take. Second, I took an energy course, where so I ended up getting a 98%. Third, I took a mechanical design engineering project course that term, where I worked in a group with four other people as part of our capstone design project. With my team, I worked on creating a smart toilet that can monitor your health throughout the day. I have a full video that explains this project in more detail on my channel. We called it Happy, and I'll link the video in the description if you're curious. Fourth, I took a fluid control course where I ended up getting a 93%. It basically combined two previous courses I took, fluid mechanics and control systems. I also ended up taking an HVAC course that term where I ended up getting a 98%. And finally, I took an optimization course where I got an 85%. I had a term average of 92.5% that term, which is by far the highest term average I've ever had. The main reason was just because school was online, I had more time to study because I didn't have to go to class or I didn't have to worry about commuting that term. Finally, we come to my last term in university in the winter of 2021. Again, this term was also online and I really tried my best to take the easiest courses out there. First, I had my mechanical engineering design project course, which was just a continuation of the smart toilet project I was working on last term with my team. Second, I took a course on nanostructural materials where we learned all about how small nanoscale materials are manufactured and ended up getting 85% of that course. Third, I took an engineering biomechanics course that term where I got a 96%. It was really fun to learn all about the human body and kind of the physics behind all the joints that we have. Fourth, I took an HVAC course that term. I wasn't really a big fan of HVAC, I didn't really like it that much, but I did well in the HVAC course I took in the previous term, so I figured I might as well take another one and hopefully I'll do as well. And finally, the last course I took in my engineering studies was an elective on how technology impacts our society. There was just so much writing in this course and I ended up getting an 85% in it. I personally preferred doing math problems, solving equations and word problems than to write essays, so it wasn't really that fun for me. But anyways, that's it. That was five years of mechanical engineering condensed in this short video. I hope this video gave you a better idea of what you can expect out of a mechanical engineering degree. And if it did, please make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.